We make a start with some breaking news this hour. Israel's military says Iran has launched a number of drones toward Israel and that they will take several hours to arrive. Iran has vowed retaliation for a suspected Israeli strike this month on an Iranian consular building in Syria. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says that his country's defenses are ready. <laughs> Netanyahu says the state of Israel is strong and the IDF is strong and the public is strong. He says Israel has been preparing for a direct attack from Iran and its defense systems are deployed. Israel has closed its airspace to all flights. Netanyahu says Israel appreciates the support of the United States, UK and other countries. Meantime, U.S. President Joe Biden has left Delaware to head back to Washington today. He was told a meeting, he'll hold a meeting rather, with his national security team. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken will be at that meeting as well. So will U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, who both spoke with the Israeli counterparts today. The White House says in a statement it will provide unspecified support for Israel's defense against the ongoing airborne attack from Iran. And let's now bring in Robert Riggs, a geopolitical risk consultant in the conversation focusing on the Middle East. Robert, it's great to have you in the program once again. Thank you for taking out the time. Thank you very much. I'm always happy to be on CTV. So, Robert, as expected, anticipated, Iran has launched drones towards Israel. What's your assessment on how far this is really going to escalate now? <clears throat> I'm uh, not very optimistic about this scenario because um, Katz, the foreign minister, Israeli foreign minister, said earlier this week that if Iran launched any attack from its own territory, then Israel would retaliate on Iranian territory. And when the Israeli government says these kind of things out loud, you have to take it really seriously. And um, there has been uh, reporting from inside of Iran that the drones were heard going out of western Iran. And so I think it's pretty clear that, and there's also on state television in Iran, they've announced proudly that they've launched these drones and they were launching missiles. Now, we haven't heard about those yet, but I think we can be anticipate that there's a possibility of missiles as well. And there was reporting that they were as, these drones were flying over southern Iraq. And there's also a report of drones being launched from southern Lebanon. So... You know, this shows the kind of the breadth and width of Iran's capabilities in the region. They've been building up their paramilitary allies across the region for decades. Right. And now they've decided to, to move forward with it. You know, Robert, we understand how Israel has been saying that they are well prepared and they will, of course, defend themselves and their citizens. But in the same breath, they also say that there will be a strong retaliation to this, like you pointed out. But my question being about the capabilities over here, the fact that Israel has been at war for over six months now, uh, you know, in, in, in Gaza, and the fact that they're also taking support from other nations like the US, the UK, etc. Let's just talk a little more about the capabilities that Israel really has now when it has to defend itself from multiple fronts? Yeah, they, they have um, a certain capability to, to bomb inside of Iran, but not a sustained campaign without U.S. support because of the long-range needs of um, refueling for their jets. So, you know, they're, they have a, a significant capability. I think that you can say that Iran is a technologically advanced country with, um, a, you know, they've shown that they are able to produce drones and, and they have anti-aircraft, uh, you know, weaponry, but they're no match for Israel's technological th superiority or just air superiority. So the, the question is, how far is Israel going to go in response and mm -hmm. how far is the U.S. going to go in backing them up? But I think that there's no question that without the U.S.'s strong military support uh, for Israel, I don't think that they can really afford to get into a, a serious war with Iran. Of course, Iran really can't afford it economically, politically, 
internally with domestic dissent and also militarily. Robert, let's just talk about the U.S. and its support as well. We know that how U.S. intelligence was stating that this attack may come as soon as Sunday. It's almost midnight, a little over that in, 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 in Iran right now. But the fact that even U.S. taking this extremely seriously, and we have seen how it has moved more ships and carriers, uh, you know, in, in, in the Middle East, uh, in the Middle East at the moment. What does that indicate to you in terms of what do you think U.S. is preparing for? Well, I think the U.S. is preparing for all options. I mean, the CENTCOM leader was meeting with the IDF just a few days ago, and Lloyd Austin spoke with uh, Gallant just today. And so I think they're, the U.S. doesn't want there to be a war. They've been saying this repeatedly for the last six months. But just because you don't want there to be a war doesn't mean a war won't happen when different other parties determine that this is their self-defense and, and it's important for them. And so there is at least um, a significantly high probability that this may go on for some time and that it could create, um, you know, a lot of problems in the Persian Gulf region. You know, Iran just yesterday um, captured this container tanker Yes. And, uh, you know, they, they're threatening to close the Strait of Hormuz. So, you know, this could very quickly spin out of control. And I think that all everybody in the region is hoping that won't be the case. Indeed. But we leave it at that for now, Robert. Always great to have you on the program. Robert Riggs, geopolitical risk consultant, focused on the Middle East. Thank you for your time, Robert.